Welcome back to another episode of Full Retard. Today we have more Cheesing Beggar stories. First up, Cheesing Beggars tried to get a refund at our restaurant by confusion nearby. First, English is not my first language, so if there are some mistakes in grammar or spelling, please just overlook them. The story is maybe not as bad as some other Cheesing Beggar stories, but it got stuck in my head because of the audacity of some people. This happened a few years ago. My parents own a hotel with the restaurant and, well, like all restaurants do, we are getting our fair share of choosing beggars. This one evening, I was helping out in the restaurant working as a waitress when we had two women enter our place. I seated them and they ordered the pheasant. I hope this is the right word for it and yes, we are serving those kind of dishes, which is a dish for two people to share. For drinks, they ordered a whole bottle of quite expensive red wine. I served them their drinks and later their meal, and there it began. They started eating and then called me over to complain about the food. They said the pheasant was really dry and overcooked, and they could not eat it. I told them politely that the pheasant wasn't overcooked, and that this kind of bird is generally dry, like a duck, for example. You have to eat it with the sauce that comes with it. They were not having it. They complained and complained and defeated. I took the nearly untouched and perfectly fine pheasant, my father and I tried it later in the kitchen, back to the kitchen. When I told my mother, who is the chef, she is, of course, got angry. But, well, she couldn't do more about it then. The two women ordered a new dish, and because the meat was so bad in our restaurant, they both ordered fish. Then they waited for their meal and, in the meantime, drank nearly the full bottle of red wine. When I brought the fish out to their table, everything was fine, but then one of them got up, went over to the bar where my father was working, and demanded to return the almost empty bottle of red wine, because red wine doesn't go well with fish. My father looked at the bottle dumbfounded and told them, they can order white wine if they wanted, but they still had to pay for the red one. Nope, not with that lady. She argued that they had ordered the red wine because of the pheasant, but after it being so bad and them now having fish instead, they wanted a refund for the bottle. My father told her that the wine was fine and therefore not refundable. Also, he asked why they hadn't returned the red wine with the pheasant right at the beginning instead of drinking nearly all of it. The woman had no real answer for this question and got angrier and angrier. Then she demanded to get the white wine for free as compensation for their inconvenience with the pheasant but my father declined and told them that they had refunded the pheasant who was perfectly fine and they got their new meals as fast as possible and that was all they could have asked for she tried to argue some more disturbed the other guests with the commotion she caused and then stomped off to her table after realizing she was getting nowhere they finished their meals on which they couldn't find something to complain about while giving us angry stares left no tip, and later a bad review. My father instructed me and the other way staff later that if these two ever came back to the restaurant to tell them they were not serving them anymore, luckily they never did. Next up, I am too snobbish to be called monsieur, but not that too snobbish to register for the unemployment agency and apply for unemployment benefits by LOL Auk. My first real post on Reddit. English isn't my first language, but I hope my best efforts will make me understandable and you awesome people will excuse me for miswriting. Don't hesitate to teach me, though. I aim to have a fluent English. Also, since I like it when people give little explanation on how things work in their country, I'll try to do the same. Tell me if it's too much. From March 2020 to September, I was working as a civic service voluntary system with small allowance at France's Governmental Unemployment Agency, PE, which registers unemployment people, helps them find jobs, and provides them with financial supports. My mission was to be at the free access computers in the reception room, helping the job seekers to use computer equipment, their personal internet space, and carry out frequent procedures. Because of the job's nature and target public, I mainly deal with poor income people, students, young adults starting their active life, refugees, old people, boomers, stuff like that. In my first week, a tall white dude in his 40s arrives dressed like a big business chairman and walking like a rooster in heat season and demands at the receptionist to put him on the list as nobody understands what the heck he calls the list nor wants or why he demands anything. The receptionist asks him the first thing any receptionist must ask. Are you registered to PE? He isn't. So the receptionist details what he needs to do. Get on PE's website, click the register page, and fill the form. If he wants, he can use the agency's free access computers and the civic service person can help him if he needs normal stuff. After a few seconds of staring at the receptionist, he walks to the computer, takes some time to figure out the big computer screens with big tactile and touch here text, and that everyone around touches with their fingers is in fact tactile, and that he stays here, immobile as a statue, in front of a screen representing different buttons like 
register or access my personal space. At this point, I just finished with the job seeker I was with, so I walk up to this posh guy. I can't translate this to English correctly, but imagine this guy talking like an annoying dandy from a satiric movie about social classes. Hello, do you need help? I need to register, although I don't like this idea, so you can put me on the list. I see you can hit the register button on the top left corner. This will open the registry form. He proceeds to hit the button. The form opens. There's a preliminary page when you must answer a few questions. Nothing fancy when explained in simple words. Are you available for searching a job right now or not? Do you receive unemployment allowances from other EU country or not? Are you under professional reintegration contact or not? Have you ever been registered at PE? PG or posh guy is obviously annoyed by those questions, but I explained to him that these questions allow the site to know him if you can be registered and which form you need. Here comes the first page of the form. The classic everyone sees for anything requiring a minimum of legal and civil info. Name, family name, birth date and place, nationality, resident permit number if foreign, social security number, contact info, postal address, blah, blah, blah. Nothing new for that kind of service. But he stops at the first element. You must choose if you must be referred as monsieur or madame. A little French language course might be needed here. Those are just normal French words. Any formal or legal text or person uses to refer to anyone. It's like Mr. and Mrs. You receive a letter. It's addressed to monsieur or madame, family name, name, etc. Nothing unexpected here. Posh guy is a male, who, so he could use monsieur and continue, right? Well, he doesn't do it. Now, you may be thinking that maybe he identifies as a female, so he wants to choose Madame, or he identifies as neither of these, and no. Can I have something different from Monsieur? Sorry. Allow me to express myself better. I don't want you to call me Monsieur. You can choose Madame instead. No, no, I just want to be called a Monsieur. What do you mean? Well, I'm afraid it would be incongruous for you to call me Monsieur because that would make how to say it would sound as if I were a commoner, you see. At this point, I'm staring at him wondering if he possibly lived in a cave since 1789 and missed the memo about the French Revolution and the one about abolition of privileges and the one from the Declaration of the Rights of Men and of the Citizen, or maybe that's because he never set a valid postal address by not indicating if he wanted to be referred as Monsieur or Madame. Who knows? But then he continued. I mean, would that be ludicrous to address each other like some citizens if we were back in post-revolution? So I guess he missed no memo. Apart from how people address to each other since more than two centuries, I guess. After making clear that no, you can't be addressed by any other word than monsieur or madame, he reluctantly proceeds to choose monsieur as any French person does and fills a few other elements. About halfway through the first page with just basic info, info to provide. So, you will add me to the list. After I complete this page, I'm not sure which list you refer to, but no, there's a few pages to fill up after that one. What do you mean? Well, after that one, we will have to create you a username and password since it's the first time you registered at PE. Then we will need to detail your past five years of work, education, sick leave, paid days off, and indicate if and how you have allowances from other systems like parental support, disabled workers, if you've been domiciled abroad in the past economic year, and finally detail what are you searching for a job. And there's a final multiple choice questionnaire to help us know exactly what you need from us and how we can help you in any way. Posh guy getting all offended and annoyed. Wait, wait, wait. You're just supposed to put me on the list. Nothing else. Which list are you talking about? Well, the list. List of what? The list of people you owe money. Why would we owe you money? Because I do not work. I don't need it and never had and never will. Sir, being unemployed alone doesn't grant you any allowance. In fact, it is the accumulation of your contributions to the unemployment fund via your income from your previous professional activity that entitles you to PE's allowances. If you have never worked in your life, you won't be granted any of PE's allowances. But if you need allowances to get through your life, you can contact the CAF Family Allowance Fund as they can grant you the minimal allowance if you're denied here. You'll just need to provide proof that you have been denied all allowances here as well as any other form of revenue elsewhere basically. He didn't like this idea and went off. Some people despise being under RSA because of some people it is really the very last thing you can get. Usually refugees and families in need are happy to be granted that but posh guy who can't bear to be called monsieur Though how can he be so over his head still walk in this national unemployment agency to beg for money? This I don't know, but it always makes a funny story to tell. I hope you enjoyed it. Next up, Choosing Beggar Tries to Take Toys from Children by JJRB33. 
So this literally just happened about half an hour ago and it eat me off. Backstory. There's a supermarket in Australia that currently has a promotion on where if you spend over $30, you get three of the toys named Ushis. They're like rubber figurines that you get as a Lucky Dip style of toy. So you can't see what figure you're actually getting until you open it. As expected, kids go crazy over these. At the moment, they're all Disney and Marvel characters and each have a form of rarity to them. They ran this promotion a year ago and one Ushi value at 200000 AUDs. So, of course, some parents are collecting them for the internet to sell. I, 20 mil, am currently a student and had the day off. I go to the shop a lot because I work at a different store, so I get discounts. As you can probably tell, I don't give a flip about these things and usually try and give them to people with grandkids or actual kids with parents' permission. Now for what happened. I finished up my shopping and the total came to $60. So, I went, collected the three issues. I start to leave the store when I see an old lady and asked if she had grandchildren and if they would like them. She respectfully declined and said that they're around my age and they probably wouldn't want them. No worries, I'll try another person. I did see, see an elder gentleman and ask again. He said yes and that they would love them as the oldest one is only seven. Perfect. So I hand them over and that's when I hear a troll clearing her throat. I turn around to see a Karen staring at me standing next to her son as he just looked at his phone. I wasn't in the way of anything so I just got her gave her a confused look. What about my son? What about him? If you're giving them away, you should give some of to him. Karen's son was a teenager, by the way. How old is your son? Fourteen. He's a little old. I wanted to give them to someone with young ones as kids love Disney. Well, he has so many of the same issues. How about a trade? But they're not open, so they might be the same as what you already have. Thank you, but I'd rather the kids open them as that's half the fun. Karen be an overdramatic sigh. Fine, I'll give you six for those three. She then opens her bag to show she has toys in there. Old man looking a little uncomfortable. Sorry, these are for my grandkids. Just give me the darn things. Old no. She then lunges forward and snatches them out of his cart. I see this coming, so I grab her around the wrist, stopping her from taking them. People started watching the incident. Let go, or I'll have you arrested for assault. Only after you let go. A manager from the store then came running over, and the old man started talking. I think they started care startled Karen because she then let go and walked off. The manager apologized to the old man, and he even cracked a joke about how he hasn't had something stolen off of him since the white man came to Australia. He was aboriginal and thanked me. I said goodbye and left to head home. I'm still peed how it happened out like Karen was only trying to get them in pursuit of the rare ones most likely to sell. I seriously effing hate Ushies if you couldn't already tell. Thanks for reading. Too long didn't rent. Karen tries to steal toys from an old man that was meant for his grandchildren. Finally, Choosing Beggar thinks I'm going to feed his entire family when I offer to bring him a sandwich by Courtney R.E.L. Happened a couple of months ago. I mentioned to a coworker that I make really good pulled pork and told him that next time I made a batch, I'd bring him a sandwich so he could try it. The next week, I made pulled pork and brought in enough meat and buns to make everyone in the office, about six people, a sandwich. I leave the pork in the fridge in the back office until lunchtime, and when I go back there to make the sandwiches, the cheesing beggar is loading pork into a Tupperware he brought from home. Is this seriously all you made? I have four kids. What are you talking about? You said you'd bring me in some pulled pork. I don't understand why this is all you brought. How am I supposed to feed my family with this amount? This isn't enough for us. I brought enough to make sandwiches for everyone in the office. I didn't say anything about cooking for your entire family. Well, I guess this is going to have to be enough, then rolls eyes. My kids are already excited because I told them I was bringing pulled pork home tonight. So now they're going to be disappointed that they only get a little bit each. Just bring more next time. I really want to put a good happy ending where I told the choosing beggar off and took the pulled pork back home, but I'm spineless and let him take the entire container of pork I brought home to his family. Thanks for listening. Be sure to like this page, video, and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. Subscribe to our podcast and like us on Facebook.